Hey folks, happy 4th of July weekend. I'm out here by the lake and I hope you've been able to be by the lake and celebrate with family and friends as we hit this midpoint in the summer. And at this midpoint, this 4th of July weekend, here's what you and I know. We know this is a summer like no other, right? It's a summer like no other. Every one of us this summer at one time or another has felt a little bit, if we're honest, out of sorts. As though life has been a little bit out of control. COVID, racial tensions, our politics, they've all led to us feeling, feeling a little bit out of sorts, if we're really, really honest. And so today what I wanna talk to you about is this. How do we sort things out when we're feeling out of sorts? Huh? How do we sort things out when we're feeling out of sorts? I'm here by the lake because I want to start with a little bit of a legendary story in our family. The first time we, uh, we put our new boat out on the lake several years ago, uh, we backed it into the lake. We were at the Carless West Access. We backed our boat into the lake. It all went fine. I parked the trailer. We all hopped into the boat. Boys got their life jackets on. We started to drift away from the dock and that's when we looked over and saw my dear wife, Katie, as she had been holding the boat to the dock, one foot on the boat, one foot on the dock, and we watched as the boat drifted away from the dock. She did the splits and fully clothed, fell into the lake. You see, the first time we do anything, the first time we do anything, something goes wrong. Am I right? It always feels a little bit awkward, a little bit out of control. The first time we do anything, it often does not go well. For example, the first time I took my buddy uh, fishing in my new boat, guess what? I forgot to put the plug in. That did not go well. Or the first time I went fishing uh, with my buddy in his boat, he handed me his $400 rod and reel, and I proceeded to accidentally drop that in the lake. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how fast rod, a rod will sink to the bottom of the lake. Huh? You see, here's what we know. The first time we do anything, it often does not go well. It feels a little out of control. It feels a little awkward. For example, the first time I ever gave a message at any church, I was up in the pulpit and I was giving my message and that's when I looked down and I saw this big man in the front row that everybody saw. I saw his head go back and he started to snore. And not a little snore, this was a snore that echoed through that sanctuary. You see, the first time we do anything, it often doesn't go well. I mean, think about it. the first time you rode a bike without training wheels. You took off, you went a few feet, and that's when you fell and you skinned your knee and you went running to your mom or dad. I mean, think about the first time you went on a date, huh? Remember how awkward that was? Your first kiss, wasn't that a little weird? Or you think about the first time you started a new job. You started at a new school. The first time you brought a, home ch a child home from the hospital, you were terrified. The first time we do anything, it's more than a little bit awkward. And so here's the thing. It's no wonder that we are all feeling a little bit out of sorts these days because we've been faced with a whole lot of things that we have never had to face before in our lives. I mean, think about it. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you have ever had to experience a global pandemic before. Come on, raise your hand. None of us have. None of us on a daily basis has had to ask questions about do we mask or don't mask. We had to ask ethical questions about who do we spend time with, who do we not spend time with. Most of us have never had to wrestle with homeschooling our children. We've never lived in a country where other countries are saying, you know what, your, your country is too sick, you can't come to ours, right? We've never experienced that before and so it's no wonder we're feeling more than a little out of sorts. And to add to that, most of us who are white have never experienced the sort of racial tensions that we're experiencing in our world today. 
Most of us who are white have never had to really wrestle with our own white bias and the white supremacy that's baked into our country, that's baked into the organizations we're a part of, that's, that's baked into how we were raised. We've never had to experience that before. And so it's no wonder we're feeling a little out of sorts. And if you were to add even more to that, most of us have never lived in a country where we are as politically divided as we are, as we are today. And those divisions have caused divisions in families. They've caused separation in relationships. They've caused divisions with coworkers and in boardrooms. Folks, it's no wonder that we are feeling a little out of sorts these days. And here's what you need to know. What you are feeling, it's normal. Just like when you got up on that bike for the first time without training wheels and you fell, it felt a little awkward, it hurt, it was hard. It's no wonder that we're feeling a little out of sorts. Because here's the deal, most of us, if you've reached middle age, most of us spend most of our days in an environment in spaces where, where we have sheltered ourselves from experiencing anything new. And we've done that, we've created lives like that, not because we are boring, as my children tell me I am, but because we crave control, because we thrive in environments where we are in control. You see, here's the deal, we, we avoid a sense of being uncomfortable, a sense of being uncomfortable that comes with doing things new because we associate subconsciously that with things that are unsafe. So what do we do? What do we do? How do we sort things out when we're feeling out of sorts? I want to suggest today that there are four things we might wonder about. If you're a Christian, uh, these go deep into our faith. If you are not, if you happened upon this on the internet, uh, I just think this might help you as well. The first thing we ought to wonder about when we feel as though life is out of sorts and we're trying to sort things out is this. In the life of faith, God never says that there won't be trouble in our lives. If we look deep into the scriptures, it reminds us that God admits to us, the Bible admits to us that in this life there will be trouble. There will be trouble. In fact, as Jesus in the book of John was preparing his disciples for that day when he would no longer be with him, he, he gave them some words of comfort. But he shared this in the book of John chapter 16, he wrote, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, listen to this, in this world, he says to his disciples, you will have what? You will have trouble. Now there's a certain brand of Christianity that suggests that if we are good enough, if we go to church enough, if we give enough offering, if we raise our kids in the right way, if we do all the things we think God wants us to do, that our lives will be carefree. But the authors of the Bible don't attest to that understanding of the life of, of faith. They're really honest with us. In this life, there are going to be troubles. It's simply a part of being human. The second thing we might wonder about as people of faith is, is when we're feeling as though things are sort of out of sorts and we're trying to sort everything out, we might wonder what are those things in our lives that feel out of sort that we need to be honest about? Honest with ourselves and honest with those around us. Most of us who grew up in the Midwest, we grew up with this idea that we got to stuff those feelings deep down inside. We've got a lesson to unlearn there. What is it? What is it that we're feeling? Those moments when we're feeling out of sort that, that we need to share. We need to share with those we love, those around us. In the book of Romans, Paul had this experience where he was tending to this church in Rome that was, that was having all kinds of struggle. In the midst of his counsel to the Romans, he does something very strange. Strange to us good Midwesterners, he shares with them how he himself struggles with faith. He shares with them his struggles with leadership. In fact, in the book of, 
uh, Romans, we hear these words. It says, we know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, Paul says, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do for what I want to do. I do not do, but what I hate, I do. He gives witness that he himself struggles. He has his own struggles of faith. What would it be like when we are trying to sort out those things that are sort of out of sorts in our lives, if we were to be honest with the people around us about how we're feeling? I mean, imagine if you were to say to those around you, I'm a little bit terrified about sending my kids to school this fall. Or, or on the other side, what if you were to share that, that you're feeling terrified about the prospect of having to homeschool your children again? You don't feel you're up for it. Or what would it be like if you're someone who's of that vulnerable population to say, I'm really nervous about being out in public right now, but I'm also sick and tired of feeling alone and isolated. Or, or, or what if you were to say something like this? You know what, I really struggle to talk about the racial tensions we're experiencing because I don't want to say anything, anything stupid. Because if I'm really honest, I don't have anyone who's really close to me, any friends who are people, people of color. What if we were to be really that honest? Or what if you were to say to the people around you, I'm really sick and tired of the way that politics have divided us, divided our family, divided our friendship, our friendship is worth more to me than politics. You see, what would it be like when you find yourself trying to sort things out, those things that are out of sorts in your life, what would it be like to be really honest about what you're feeling? The next thing I would invite you to wonder about is this. I think discomfort, this discomfort we often feel when we do things, experience things for the first time, discomfort is a natural is a natural sign of growth it's a natural part of growth uh, when i was younger i ran a lot of marathons and uh, part of running a marathon is you get to the point as you prepare for a marathon where you are just plain sick and tired of running 20 mile runs you're sick and tired of losing toenails you're sick and tired of buying new tennis shoes there is no but here's what i know there is no gain without a little a little bit of pain uh, this summer i've been able to golf a little bit with my boys my boys are old enough and i have made a decision that uh, I am going, after 46 years of hitting a slice, I'm going to fix my slice. But here's what I know. I'm going to have to go through some pain and some embarrassment. Because when I'm out there on the practice range, I look like a total idiot trying to hit the ball straight. Well, everybody hits those beautiful shots that are nice and straight. Mine are headed off into the trees. First one to the left, second one to the right. You see, here's what we know, discomfort. Discomfort is a natural, a natural part, a natural part of growth. Uh, if you had at one time an old washing machine, in the washing machine was this thing that went back and forth like this. It was called what? It was called an agitator. And I love that image because with an out an agitator in those old washing machines, your clothes would not get clean. I think that's a great analogy for us in our lives. We need to be agitated. We need to feel a little discomfort in order for us to experience growth. Finally, the last thing for us to wonder about, I believe, is people of faith, when we're trying to sort things out, when we're wondering how do we sort things out when we're feeling out of sort. The last thing I want you to remember, and if you forget everything else I say, please don't forget this. The last thing you need to know is that you are not alone. You are never alone. You see, God is with you. God promises to be with you every step of this journey as we navigate this summer like no other in these times that seem so turbulent. God is with you each and every step of the way, whoever you might be, whatever your life has looked like. My absolute favorite passage in the Bible comes from the book of Romans. And that passage goes like this. Paul is writing to that church again in Rome, and he writes this. He writes, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? 
Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or the sword? No, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, you are never alone. God is always with you. When you're pulling your hair out because of all the COVID restrictions, when the racial tensions start to build up inside you and make you tense, when it feels like our political divide is dividing you from your, your family, your, your friends, your co-workers, remember this, you are not alone, that you have a God who goes with you. Folks, as we close today, I, I'm going to invite you, if you're with family, if you're with friends, or even if you're by yourself, I want to invite you to wonder about three questions today as we close. The first is this. What in your life has felt out of sorts lady, lately? What has felt out of sorts over the last several months in your life? And how have you successfully or not tried to sort those things out? Hmm? What for you has felt out of sorts and how have you tried to sort those things out? Secondly, my question for you is this, what in your life feels out of sorts? What in your life feels out of sorts that you haven't been fully honest with those around you about? Where do you need to be more honest with the people around you, the people you, you care about? What feels out of sorts that you need to to share with those around you so they can support you and care for you. And finally, my question to you is this, where might God, where might God be inviting you to experience a little discomfort, a little holy agitation, if you will, so that you might grow, so that you might grow in your life, in your faith, so that your family might grow, you as a person might grow. Where in your life is God inviting some discomfort, some holy agitation so that you might grow? Folks, the question for today is this, how? How do we sort things out when we're feeling out of sorts in this summer that is like no other? How do we sort things out when we're feeling out of sorts? If you hear nothing else today, please hear this. You are never alone. You have a God who walks with you, whatever your life looks like, whoever you are, wherever you've been, whatever you've done or not done, we have a God, a God who walks with you and wants you to know you are never alone. High than the mountains that I face Stronger than the power of the grave Constant in the trial and the change One thing remains One thing remains your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me your love never fails and never gives up never runs out on me yeah your love your love because on and on and on and on it goes Yes, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul And I never ever have to be afraid This one thing remains Your love never fails and never gives
optimism never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Yeah, your love, your love, your love, your love. Yeah.